Give me the number one objection. Let me talk to my wife. Listen, I'm, I'm going to make it simple. If I was to talk to your wife right now, I know the number one question she's going to ask. She's going to say, hey, this is my house. I love the home. You probably don't pick out everything in the house she does. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Her job, her number one concern is going to be make sure that everything gets there properly without being broken. It gets moved in properly and everything's a smooth system. Because no matter what you pay, if it's not a smooth system, she's going to be pissed off. Am I right? Right. So hypothetically, if we already talked to your wife and she said, let's do it, would we do it? 100%. Okay, so if I tell you that I'm going to get everything there on time, I'm going to get everything moved in, we're not going to break nothing, everything's insured, and the liability is higher than any other moving company in the world, we already know she's going to say yes. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, listen, so you're going to be the hero that's going to take all the headache out of the deal. I'm going to get this wrapped up, and you're going to call her and tell her that you did the research, you made sure that all of her stuff that she loves is going to get there safe, and you can guarantee it. And if you can guarantee it, that would probably take a lot of headache out of her. She's probably doing a lot of their heavy burden stuff right now and getting ready for this move. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, so we don't frustrate her anymore. If I can guarantee this and ensure this, we wouldn't have any reason not to move forward. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, then let's wrap this up. What card do you want to put it on? No, push through. Okay, hey, I really appreciate it, but I've already got somebody I've been using for the last eight years. I'm good. Hey, listen, my name is Michael. I know we haven't met yet, but what I've learned and research shows that a lot of these service truck companies, that is a big service truck companies that does your stuff, do they have a lot of accounts? Yes. Yeah. What I've learned is as they become bigger accounts, they forget about their customers. My name's Michael. I'm only looking to take on about 10 or 15 fleet accounts. That's it. You know why? Because servicing my customers at the highest level is extremely important to me. Look, I'm going to ask you a question. You sound really loyal to the company you're currently with. I'm wondering if that loyalty is coming back to you as loyal as you are to them. Can I ask you a question? Have you noticed any discounts come across your, your table in the last year where they've allowed you to save money by being a loyal customer? Probably not. You know what I've learned by buying insurance? My insurance company, I had the same insurance company for 10 years. You know who they were giving the best deals to? New customers. And I overpaid as a loyal customer. This is what we commonly see which is why I never want to be one of the big guys. What I want to do is that I want to find 10, 15 clients that I can give everything to and that I want to be loyal to. And I want to make sure that when you spend your money, the job gets done right, but also you save as much as you can because I understand this isn't a nonprofit. Would you agree? Yes. Can I ask you a question? Would you mind if you show me what you currently are doing now with what you have? And if I could offer something better with even more loyalty, would you allow me to at least give you a five minute proposal? Could I show it to you? Absolutely. See, I promise you, there is a way to frame every conversation to get people to turn around their decision. This is gonna be like, I'm like, hey, we wanna put a pool and then an outdoor little grill kitchen over here. Is that cool? You're like 85 grand, is that cool? Yep. Okay, I'm like, hey, I appreciate it, um, but price is too high. Sir, I totally understand. Listen, I've never once came into someone's home and said, all right, it's gonna be this much for your pool and your outdoor kitchen. They go, dang, I thought it was gonna be another 100 grand. It's never happened. So I have a question to ask you. I'm gonna talk to your wife, Nancy. You've envisioned in your head what this backyard's gonna look like. Am I correct? Now, Nancy, nobody else can get inside your head and see what you see. I know what you see, though. You see the kids playing, you see the beautiful pool, you look out in your backyard, you see your dream house. You see the outdoor kitchen, you see your husband over here, and everybody's having a good time. I, I know what you see. No one else is gonna see that. When you start saying, I can't afford that, that's too much, let me tell you what they're gonna do. They're gonna cut your dream down. It's gonna happen every single time. Dreams come with a price. If you don't pay the price, you don't get the dream. I'm gonna explain how this works. If I said, all right, I'll do it for less. Let's say I'll do it for 75,000, I'll do it for 70,000, and we agree on a deal, which I'm not gonna do. But I wanna tell you that if I did, and then I started the work, we started the construction, it ended up taking three times longer than it was supposed to take. And when it's all said and done, you look in your backyard and you go, this is not what I paid for. This is not what I wanted. And they said, yep, it is. This is exactly what you, and you say, this isn't what I envisioned. I know. See, most people that are amateurs will do the work, they'll make you a cheap deal, and you will not get what you want. And if you're okay with that, we're not right for you. And that's why I'm telling you, when you do business with us, basically, we remove all the risk. We transfer all the risk off you guys, and we see what you want, we produce it, we make it, and that's how we're gonna do business. And what would that be worth to you? Everything, right? Well, I don't need everything. I just need you to sign on the dotted line right here so I can start getting this, this dream pool put in. You see? That's it. Miss how do you think about it? What do you think about it? 
Listen, Robin, of course you need to think about it. I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. What I'd like to do is give you a quick five minute proposal of all the numbers, so when you go home, you got something to think about. Would that be fair? Yeah. That's it, watch, what did I say? Course you, you said I need to think about it. What did I say? Of course you need to think about it. I said I'm giving you enough information not to think about it. What I'd like to do is give you a quick five minute proposal of all the numbers so that way at least when you go home you got something to think about. Would that be fair? Did I get that for you? Did notice my hand went right in his chest? Now when he goes inside, what am I going to do? It's very simple. I'm going to say hypothetically, Rob, when you are ready to buy, how do you want your new car title? Also, that's the car you're going to be trading outside. Is that correct? Okay, awesome. Now I know you got a payment on the vehicle outside. Is that right? Cool, let me go and grab the keys of the trade. Also, I know that payment's gonna be important on the new vehicle, so, so I can get the payment to the penny on the new vehicle, I'm gonna get two seconds of information. Is that cool? I'll get you everything, and in the end, it's your decision. Is that all right? Yes, okay, what do I have? Trade appraisal, write-up sheet, credit app, keys to his trade. He's buying it. He's buying a car. He's down the rabbit hole now. He's I have all his information. He's, He's buying a car. He's Am I right? It. Hey, Andy, we got a couple more cars we wanna go look at. Hey, number one, I totally understand it. Let me ask you a question. Are the vehicles you're gonna go look at similar to the one that me and you just looked at, or are they completely different? Which one? If they say completely different, you did your job wrong. You need to take them back to the lot and go find another car. But if they say, no, it's kind of similar, same type of car, okay, cool. Hypothetically, let's say you had already gone and seen all those other vehicles, all of them. I don't care if there's two of them or 20, it doesn't matter. Let's say you went and drove every single one of them. And then let's pretend that mine was the last one you went and looked at. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, after driving every vehicle, Vehicle. In the end, what would be the deciding factor on which one you'd probably end up buying? Would it be the car itself, regardless of the deal, or would it be the great deal that the dealership is willing to give you? Which one? They're always gonna say great deal. I mean, 99% of the time, they're gonna say, well, it'd be the deal. You say, cool. So it's not a matter of if you're gonna buy, it's when. And the when is when the deal's right, right? And they'll always say right. And then you say, awesome. So if I could save you some time and money, would that offend you in any way? Would you be upset with me at all? They'll say no, and you say, Thank goodness. And you put your hand out. Take him inside. That's how it's done.